In this video, we'll consider solving Laplace's equation in polar coordinates. Specifically, we would like to be able to solve the following equation, where variable u is now a function of uh, r and theta, where r and theta are our usual variables in polar coordinates. So if you have a circle, r is the radius of that circle and theta is the angle which by convention is uh, increasing as you go counterclockwise. This problem also has an additional uh, constraint that goes beyond the boundary conditions or initial conditions. And that is because we're on a circle, U has to satisfy a period, period, periodicity condition. So it, the value of U at R and theta has to be the same at R and theta plus any integer multiple of pi. So if you're over here and you turn by two pi, you end up back in the same point. So uh, you have to have the exact same value. And it's a small point, but this is actually an infinite number of conditions because if the function u has to satisfy this, then every derivative also has to satisfy this condition. So we'll approach this problem once again using separation of variables, where we assume that we can break up u of r and theta into two functions, capital R of r and capital theta of theta. And then as before, we plug it into uh, our equation to turn our partial differential equation into a system of ordinary differential equations. So in, uh, in polar coordinates, the Laplacian is given by the following expression. When you substitute u is equal to the product of a function of r and a function of theta, and then divide by u as we did before. Then you get the following expression. I skipped a couple of steps, but you should uh, fill them in to make sure you understand uh, what's happening here. This is D, DR. Okay, and here we also uh, multiply both sides by R squared. So that's how we ended up with the R up here. And the one over R squared was simplified. And this still has to equal to zero. So as we had in Cartesian coordinates, uh, this condition is telling us that each one of these terms has to be equal to a constant. This has to equal, we'll call the constant n squared. And for these two to cancel out, uh, 
then we're also going to require that this is equal to minus n squared. So that when you add them up, you get zero. Okay, so this is the usual condition that we have to satisfy when we separate variables. And we can rewrite this to make it more clear that these are uh, ordinary differential equations. So we have our two ordinary differential equations that we need to solve to be able to construct our general solution of U. We'll begin by solving the equation for theta for the case when N is in general not equal to zero. And this is, again, a second order differential equation with constant coefficients. And depending on the value of n, this has the following general solution. And we'll treat the case where n is equal to zero uh, explicitly. Uh, afterwards. Okay, so we have one part of our solution. Then for the radial equation, the equation that depends on the radius, And then we can rewrite this by carrying out the differentiation. Into something that looks like this. And these are all functions of R. And this is the general form for a, uh, a popular differential equation known as the Cauchy-Euler equation. And we won't go into uh, the reasoning for solving it. We'll just say that uh, you generally have to assume that uh, this equation has, has solutions of the form, again, depending on this number n. Okay, so this is the general form of the solution to the Cauchy-Euler differential equation, which is this one. And you're welcome to plug this in back in here to check that it's indeed satisfied. Okay, so we have both uh, parts of our general solution, at least for the case when n is not equal to zero. So we have our theta dependence over here. And then we have our R dependence over here.
So now we have to consider explicitly what happens when n is equal to zero. It's identically equal to zero. In this case, the differential equation for the angular component becomes this, which uh, integrating twice gives the general solution of a, uh, a linear relationship. Similarly, the radial equation when n is equal to zero becomes that, which again, integrating twice gives you a solution of this form. So some integration constant times the natural logarithm of R plus another integration constant. And now you'll notice that uh, our angular equation, unlike for the case when N was not equal to zero, can't satisfy periodos period periodicity. Uh, the other ones had trigonometric uh, functions in it, which forced it to satisfy that. This one does not. Okay, so periodicity for data dependence, again, says that if you shift the argument by some integer multiple of two pi, you have to get the same value. There's no way to get a linear function to satisfy this. So A must be equal to zero. So when we end up that the actual form of our angular dependence when n is equal to zero, is just a constant. So just contrib contributes an extra constant. That means that our general function when n is equal to zero is just uh, basically the radial dependence here C naught is the product of C and B. So it's just a new constant and D naught is a product of D with B. So it's just a, another constant. And then we can combine our two solutions when n is equal to zero and when n is not equal to zero to build our general solution for Laplace's equation in polar coordinates. Okay, so we have the solution when n is equal to zero and the solution when n is not equal to zero. So n starts at one. And then I'm just gonna continue down here. So these two terms are multiplying one another. Okay, so this is the general solution uh, to Laplace's equation in polar coordinates. And then the idea is you find your constants a n, b n, c n, d n, and all of these according to the boundary conditions and to the physics of the problem. So this solution can't uh, diverge. So for example, if your origin is included 
in your domain of interest, then this term over here can't exist because then you would, uh, it will blow up. You will get an infinity in your solution. And we'll see an example of this, uh, of how to apply this in the next video.